Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh to some of you and peace out to the rest of you. You already know who it is and who it ain't. It ain't your boy and it is your man, the blackest hearted, blackest minded, blackest man on social media, signing black and shining again, asking you to hit the mother cuss word share button because the message is more important than the messenger. So here it goes. <clears throat> um, I realize that uh, there's this yearbook picture of what of who really does look like a young Kevin Samuels. Uh, and the caption underneath it um, lists some hobbies, but I couldn't remember if it listed his name or not. It doesn't matter. I'm going to go ahead and assume that the photo is of him because of the resemblance. Um, the hobbies listed are non-stereotypical. Now, this is coming from an orthodox practicing Muslim who takes the religion seriously and therefore is diametrically opposed to and unabashedly, uh, unabashedly biased against men getting busy with men and women getting busy with women, even more so than I am against regular run-of-the-mill fornication between the two genders. See, where I live now, if I find out that... Uh, a hetero couple was engaging in fornication, I wouldn't even necessarily report it, especially if I don't have enough other witnesses. And you, and you know what? You're not going to get them. So I wouldn't go to the authorities and be like, oh, you know, they're bumping uglies. Because that takes um, a larger number of witnesses. It takes proof. If I find that a woman is getting with women or that a dude is getting with dudes, I will look to get evidence and then turn them in. That's how bad it is. So this is my stance, and yet and still, I'm about to tell you what I'm about to tell you. This same man you are now listening to who will not defend booty banditry or women scissoring uh, is here to tell you, recording this to tell you, that Mr. Samuels is not being called G-A-Y because of any evidence that he's actually in two other men's rear ends. He is being called this because of his message. And I said before, our support from him our support for him needs to be very conditional, and that is it needs to hinge on him telling these, these things that the women don't want to hear and not going in on the men unless it is for things that a particular individual man knew and still did wrong. Outside of that, for the shuck up, you can inform men, but don't go talking down to them like you used to do. That's been the support that we need to have for him. When he was going in on men and talking down, we needed to actually have a problem with that. And many men did. And guess what? He started talking to the women and finding out what we were saying. They are too father mucking entitled. They are lowest lanes demanding supermen. That's the end of it. And he's seeing this. And you see him losing patience progressively with each subsequent call because he knows that the ones who he uh, is talking to at any given moment have already heard the ones that spoke to him before her. And he's trying to understand why it is that if they've all seen him before and know what he's going to say, why does this not spread amongst them yet? What's taking them so further mucking long? So he loses patience each time. So he doesn't want to hear Shaq Jit, no I did not curse, about your father mucking horoscope, which your sign is, and some astrological reason that you have to have this personality. He's telling you, you get your personality in shape, you get it together, you would not tolerate this from a man, you're not going to give this to men, especially high value men that you and every other woman wants, and then get him and then keep him, it ain't happening. He tells them what they need to hear. You're not going to get that man to be exclusive to you if he's high value. I'm not promoting adultery. I do promote polygyny. 
However, and I promote polygyny for broke men, just because the, the wicked witches of the West need to eat some humble pie. So every Western woman that's not uh, sharing her husband, even if he's broke, that's fine. She still needs to think that she's sharing her husband with another woman that's also gorgeous. I said it. Because after going through any experience in the West, that's exactly what men deserve. On my last recording, I said that uh, Dr. Umar Johnson didn't make any sense when he decided to leave off Islam in which Allah promised multiple concubines and wives in paradise to men who make it because uh, the women of this world, even in the East, are going to put you through enough to where you will earn it. So don't screw it up. I said that. And now I'm sitting up here and I'm saying something very similar. Western men are definitely going to be in positions where they, I mean, you're going to, you go, as a Western man or man in the West, you're going to go and grow up in a hypersexualized environment. That's the first thing. So you're going to go through your early pubescent years, i.e. your teens, uh, wherein your value is the least, but you're also the most exposed to these images. And you're going to see the women that sit next to you in class that are anything to look at run off and leave you selling themselves to the highest and oldest bidder. Only getting with two types of dudes, the ones that are inappropriately too old for them, because of the money they have, or the few that are within the same appropriate age difference um, because of the social standing that they offer. Most normal men are not, most normal men are going to graduate as virgins, and most of the women are going to graduate with high body counts for their age for 18. So you're already going through a very nasty and insulting experience. So F what they want. And he sits up and he tells these women, you ain't getting exclusivity. He lets them know, and this is exactly what they need to know. They should not get exclusivity from the same few men that all of them want. That's what polygyny is, that's what it's for. And yes, I am prioritizing the sexual aspect of polygyny far above any of the financial aspects of it. He tells them some hard truths. He has Western women eating humble pie, which they need to. He lets them know, you waited too late, you got too old, you got too big, you had too many other men's kids, and you developed too bad of an attitude to qualify for even a normal or a bit above average man, let alone a high value elite man that all of y'all want. And here's why. B word, you don't qualify. Age, height, dress size, weight. Now the fifth one is attitude, but he can find that out by asking him about the other things. And you see how they always try to philosophize these standards when it comes to them, but they're very uh, scientific about holding men to these standards. This man is not 6'1". I'm not going to give him a shot unless, of course, he has something that makes up for it, like even more money or he's famous and more popular. But I will not deal with a man that is actually in, in a normal range. Even if he's my type, he's not my friend's type. Not doing that. Y'all saw when that, that uh, Latina called in and she was 280 pounds. She wanted to philosophize about why these things don't qualify her. No, they, they disqualify you. This is the reason why it is that they're coming out and they're saying this stuff about him now and trying to dig. Why they even dig up the old yearbook picture? They did it because they were just looking for anything. They keep on trying. And even though I say that our support for him does need to be very conditional based on who he's telling what and how he serves our interests because our interests are right and we all don't, we're on the right side in this conflict. This is going to be a time 
to say in his defense um, because it, it's the right thing to say. You can sit up and say he was soft. You could say that he grew up soft. He said he was raised by a single mother. We already know guys who come from single mother households are either hyper macho or uh, hypo masculine, meaning not quite masculine enough. His hobbies and interests were not stereotypical enough. We already know that. But he said that he came up in a single mother household. He has since then taught himself certain skills that would pertain to the masculinity that he is encouraging amongst us. So we can say that he's not necessarily uh, preaching what he doesn't practice that we know of. Now, if you take a man uh, the same age and that man used to go around dealing drugs and robbing ninjas, even in the high school, and he was a nuisance, and he made non-stereotypical, non-swaggerilla students' lives hell. And then someone dug up his old yearbook picture in which he's flipping the camera off, because you know niggas, and started talking bad about what he used to be like, they would say, well, come on, man, you know that was back then, he was in his teens. What's he like now as an adult? Okay, fine, if we're going to utilize that logic, which we always do, we have to utilize that same excuse on behalf of Mr. Samuels. Okay, that was high school, what about now? Some would say, so, okay, black mind, you a Muslim and you defending booty banditry. No, I just said I'm not defending that. What I am saying though, and I'm not even really saying it's okay to just be, um, it, for us, it's not even okay to act like the opposite gender. I'm talking about from your own standpoint, those of you listening, especially you gynocrat goons and matriarchal mam dingoes, you are the ones I'm talking to largely because, you see, you will utilize the excuse of teenage immaturity to justify why some swaggerilla acted this a particular way when they were that age and why they should still be allowed to live today. I would say no, them niggas need to catch bullets in the head. If you made someone's life hell at age 16, you should not live uh, yourself to the next birthday. I'm the one saying that, whether you're white or black. I advocate executing high school bullies, not for things they say to someone else, just, but, but if they either threaten violence or employ violence, if at that point you did it to someone smaller than you, death. Get rid of the animals from the human species, black or white. I, I advocate that. You would come to me and you would say, well, see, you just an elitist and you were just one of those that got picked on and, you know, you, you butthurt and, uh, that, that's, they're the real alphas and you just mad because you're not alpha enough and they were teenagers and uh, that's what you would say. Okay, well, he was a teenager. So if he was too soft as a teenager, you have to apply the same excuse to him. But also, also, I'm not defending actual booty banditry. The actual engagement in uh, uh, sexual acts with one's own gender. But what I am saying is this. I said it before, before you say that he actually was getting booty with other dudes, come with the evidence, because that's a, that's, a, a, that's a very serious charge. Come with the evidence. What evidence you got? Do you have any? Because, see, he lived in Atlanta. He's lived, I think he said he's lived in New York and in Atlanta. If he has lived in Atlanta all this time, look, I lived in Atlanta. And what I can tell you is this. If you are a part of that rainbow community, that means you like butt. You part of that, you know, you roll like Fleece Johnson does. Then you become mainstream. Then uh, you don't validate them they're going to come out and, and out you. It's not just going to be any of them. It's going to be the ones in the Atlanta area. They're going to come out you. And they're going to come with whatever receipts they can get their hands on. They are not playing games like that. You're not just going to uh, 
party with them, then turn around, get mainstream, and then leave them behind. That they don't roll like that and then act like you would never enter the same thing that they're into for which they're known that defines them as a community you will not do that they're not going to let that happen so um for all the years that tyler perry's been living between new orleans and atlanta uh not one dude has come out and said well you know he and I did X Y and Z now they could do that with Bishop Eddie Long not one of them several of them did that with Bishop Eddie Long not one of them came out and tried to say this with uh, Tyler Perry not one has come out since Mr. Samuels has been mainstream and said well you know we used to do this that and the other so those of you that are trying to say that he's actually into uh, men's rear ends, um, not only do you not have evidence that he is because you would have come with it, but there is evidence that he's not actually that effeminate or that soft. There's evidence he's not. The, the lack of accusation coming out of Atlanta, that is evidence. I lived in it. I mean, I lived in Atlanta. If I was into something like that, somebody that was into that stuff in Atlanta would have come out and said, I recognize his voice. I would have been doxxed and they would have brought whatever receipts. Most men anywhere are really not into other dudes, even when they're soft. And that's if they're soft. I don't know that Mr. Samuels was actually that easy of a target coming up in high school. I didn't go to high school with him. I wasn't, uh, I don't think I was even in high school when he was in high school. I was probably in elementary, several states away. I was in the deep south. He was in Oklahoma. So no. <laughs> Uh, I wasn't the one going around testing people anyway, trying to see which dude that acted soft was really that soft, let alone trying to see if I could get them to drop their pants. So let's then go to what the real reason is that anybody would have for saying that he's actually into dudes. Okay, well, first off, they've been trying this with Mr. Anderson too. Shout out to him. They've been trying to say this. Well, Mr. Anderson lives in North Carolina. Uh, I don't know what the population of actual guys that are into other guys is in North Carolina. I'm not sure. What I do understand, though, is that they say this not because Mr. Anderson has ever shown interest in dudes. They say this about him because he's actually calling out the BS when sisters lie about their own preferences and when they complain about um, what men are doing to them, but they're complaining to men that aren't doing these things. He calls that out. He says you can't exercise a dual mating strategy. Men are getting hip to that. You need to be honest with yourself. And so they get upset and they start calling them G-A-Y. And actually there are a lot more dudes saying this than there are women. Because these dudes that are saying these things are trying to get the approval of the sisters. That's where the real shame lies. This is straight out of sisters' playbook, and I'm waiting on sisters to come out in any large numbers doing this, and with instead I get to see brothers trying to do this. And I myself said, Mr. Samuels, when he was going in on men, I said, Mr. Samuels, you're barking up the wrong tree, literally. And while you're doing that, uh, some people are going to be able to point at your mannerisms. You ain't making a strong case for yourself. I said it. But I didn't say you. I, I, I myself refrain from accusing him of actually going and being a cheerleader, if you will. A booty bandit. Another Fleece Johnson. I didn't. Uh, make those accusations because you need to have some kind of evidence if not proof 
And the black community loves to take these slanders and these labels with no evidence, let alone proof. Just to discredit someone for saying something that they don't like and don't want to hear and don't want nobody else to know. It appears that the sisters have taken this play out of the playbook and passed it on to the matriarchal mamdingos and the gynocrat goons. That's what it seems to be now. Again, I say that our support for him needs to be very conditional. But he is still in the process of fulfilling that condition as of a few hours ago, telling the ladies what they need to hear and not focusing on the men anymore. So gentlemen, since there's no evidence that he's uh, actually into other dudes and he's lived in Atlanta in which guys who are will not let one of them become famous and then just, you know, leave the rest of them behind without outing him. Therein is evidence that he's not. So it behooves us to go ahead and continue to support him right now, not support even not even supporting necessarily that curl he wore and the way he posed in high school. But again, the ones that are going to sit up and say, so you're going to look at this and ignore it are the same ones that always want us to ignore what the pookies and the red, what the idness did back when they were teens and say, well, they grown now. But when it's somebody that's non-stereotypical and not a swaggerilla, you can't ignore that. And this is why it is that I say that, yeah, the community is going to split. It definitely is. And in order for anybody that was into that Pookie and Ray Ray business, that it and the stuff, that swaggerilla stuff, anyone that was into that and really, really wants to be reformed as the community splits, needs to meet the Malcolm X standard of reform. Nothing less. Change your feather mucking attitude towards education and academics. Not just your attitude, but your practice. At least learn... Uh, an advanced vocabulary in your first language with the proper spelling and proper punctuation and be able to deliver a message correctly in that first language. You can't do that. That's too much for you. Fuck the shuck up. You're still an itness. You're still a swaggerilla. You just want people to say that you changed. That's all. We have no way of knowing that you actually did. But if you're going to sit up here and say, well, you know, he's up there leaning on that tree with that S curl. Uh, this is your this your man's within uh, you a booty bandit like him. You willing to sit up here and say this. When he was 18, probably at that time or 17, which would mean that it was 34 to 33 years ago. And then you'll turn around and tell us that we have to accept into the community or the conscious community, uh, some somebody that was a swaggerilla stereotype just three years ago. Someone that just got released from doing a bid for some serious crimes, probably with a black victim. We supposed to take them in because they tell us that they changed now. Meanwhile, they sound and walk and swagger the exact same way that they did before they went into the joint. We ain't got time for this. Our support does need to be conditional for him, but he has not violated the conditions at this point. He has not violated the conditions according to what I said, and he has not even violated the conditions according to the Swaggerilla's rules of who we support and who we don't. I got now at this point four men. No, five. Five men that I know in real life that have told me that about Kevin Samuels and how he's changed their lives. Five of them right now in real life. And these five, that's how I know. I can tell somebody in my real life about this here YouTube channel. If they come to me and they say, man, Black, have you heard of this dude named Kevin Samuels? Yep. Why? What's going on? Man, bro, I've been watching his stuff, man. He is on point. 
Didn't you used to say this back in, in, in the 90s? Didn't you used to say this back in college? Yes, I did. Man, bro. Then I can give them the link to this channel. Five of them. Close friends from childhood included. From teenage years included. Five of them. Nope, I'm sorry, six. Six of them now. From, that I know that I met in real life. 82 Kings. I met him in real life. Black Johnson, he now knows. I've told y'all about Black Johnson multiple times. Well, yep, now Black Johnson knows. Another one. Nicknamed Nighttime and Midnight. Those are his two nicknames. From Atlanta. Mac Johnson knows him. <laughs> he now knows about this channel. We're waiting on Dark to be able to, to figure this out. And when Dark's pill goes from purple to red, I'll give him the link to. Of course, my son. Uh, but that's a different story. Then there are two co workers. And then a uh, Muslim brother I met in Atlanta, but who actually winds up being from uh, the Gulf Coast like me. Same thing. These are men that have, they've said to me, yeah, man, I, this dude, he just like, he explains everything. One of my partners actually sat up and utilized some of the things that, that, that Kevin was talking about motivated uh, himself to go and do some research and came back and said, yo, man, my wife actually would, she would qualify for a mental diagnosis. He came back and he said to me, yo, black, my wife's been treating me like a no good ninja, even though I've been provided and taken care. She's been treating me like a no good ninja because her mother did that to her father since her mother made more money than her father. And I find out that her mother's mother did the same thing to her grandfather. So this is cyclical. I said to him, you know what? You don't just need to listen to Kevin. You need to listen to BGS Ibmore. I put him up on, on BGS. I told him, BGS will tell you this has been a pattern. So he's got two channels, BGS Ibmore, IBMOR, and Black Gnostic Speaks. You can go to both of them. A Black Gnostic, a Black Pill, I think, a Black Gnostic Pill. I, I, I sent him the links, and I said, man, you go, you go there, and what you will find is that he talks about the history of this. This been going on, bro. And the book, Daughters of the Trade, this been going on. So this is a man who used to go in on dudes, letting the wicked witch of the West off the hook, never having a father mucking thing to say about them. Then finding out that no, no, she's the entitled Lois Lane demanding a Superman. It's her. It ain't him. And since then, he's been going in on her. Rightfully so. And what has happened because of that? man what's happened because of that is that i've had people i know in real life come and tell me that they know about him i don't have to mention his name they come and tell me they know about him because much of what i've been saying has uh, much of what he's been saying matched what they heard me say some years ago many of them back in high school heard me say this stop being so damn easy start looking at what they're doing call them out have standards for them to meet since you have to meet standards for them. Just be fair with it. Yeah. Yeah. They're coming to me and telling me this. And, and that's how I, I, I can put them up on my channel. And some of them have sent other subscribers to me. But more importantly, they've hit the share button. So the message is getting out there. And part of that is due, I mean, as a matter of fact, a large part of that is due to the fact that he, this man, Mr. Samuels, went mainstream. So whatever evidence you do not have 
fuck the shuck up and don't ask us to jump to a conclusion. Straight like that. Don't come with something he's already tackled or something he's already said and cleared up before. They try to say he was a deadbeat dad. Whatever came of that, nothing because there's no proof that it was his biological daughter. Now they want to sit up here and say that he was a cheerleader. Meaning, meaning that he was, a, he was fruity. He was in the dudes. He may have been soft, but he already cleared that up. But in the dudes, no evidence of that. What's next? They're going to start saying that he was sent by the Chinese to break up the black families. That, that's what somebody's going to say next? Man, look. Bottom line, bottom line. As much as I'm against that actual lifestyle of dudes with dudes, it has been used far too often as a false accusation, slanderer, discredit tactic by the gynocracy, by the wicked witches of the West in our community for me to take something like that serious until you bring me evidence, if not proof, that this dude is getting with other dudes. Don't show me innuendo. None of that. And it's going to be a hard thing to prove or even to get evidence of because people generally practice whatever uh, uh, they're into behind closed doors. But still, still, come with the evidence. Because right now, the lack of accusations of such by that actual community in the Atlanta area is evidence in his favor. Because there are enough of them in the Atlanta area to where even if you are innocent of such, but you just hung around with some and you partied with some of them, and then you get famous mainstream and you don't validate them, some of them will come with a fabricated story. There are enough of them in it. Just, I'm just saying that the, high, the, the population in Atlanta is high enough to where that would happen, and yet even that hasn't happened. That means that nobody in that community feels comfortable enough to come and try to implicate him in that. Same with Tyler Perry. I'm not a fan of Tyler Perry's, but that accusation is too serious to take lightly. And frankly, the lack of such by members of that real true practicing community in Atlanta, the lack of such accusations is evidence of his innocence. So, I think I made the point clear. Thank you for listening. Black heart, black mind, blackout. Asalaamu As Alaikum and black heterosexual non-select male power just because they don't like it. And black patriarchy until extinction or judgment day. <laughs>